outline may contain sexually oriented content. 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 Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Love Line. Coast to Coast. Hey, everybody. It's the Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Mighty Mighty Boston's are coming in here tomorrow night, which is uh, good because I like that band and I love those guys. So uh, you haven't seen Dickie in a long time. Oh, yeah, feels like a long. Will you turn that music down, Anderson? Thank you. This is starting to feel a little too much like a radio show. Yeah! Uh, there's there Dickie. I saw Dickie uh, a year ago. Uh. I think he came by the Man Show and uh, hung out. We went and watched a trampoline shoot. So. Nice. Uh, Mighty Mighty Boston's in here tomorrow night. Dr. Drew, board certified. I do all that. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Medicine specialist. Phone blah, number. blah, blah. 1 800 LOV 191. There we go. All right. And? You have something to complain about tonight? I have multiple, oh, multiple. Sure. Well, multiple. I've several days to accumulate complaints. Uh, how was the Hollywood Bowl last night? Multiple things to complain about. Well, I don't think I'd ever been to the Hollywood Bowl. Really? I really don't. Maybe I'd been there once. Oh, my God. It's incredible because I live about a mile and a half away. And you grew up in North Hollywood. And I've passed the Hollywood Bowl a thousands of times. Yeah. But let me explain something, Drew. If you have super lazy parents yeah. and you go to public schools, yeah. d don't think and you hang out with loser friends like oh. and get into construction yeah, after high this school. Is, this is your profile. Don't think you'll ever go to the bowl. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have to take your ass to the bowl. Mm. You know, you just assume, well, growing up in L.A., I'm sure yeah. at some point with the school or with the parents or with the something or with the uncle or yeah. with the... No, yeah. not the Corollas. Mm. You wouldn't go anywhere. You got to you gotta get yourself there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I never got myself there. Yeah. So last night I went for the very first time, and I didn't exactly even know what I was doing. There was just somebody's got a box and they're like 50 bucks a ticket and come on oh, it's gonna the be great lunch the whole we're picnics. packing a picnic yeah, basket yeah. and uh it was the uh it was the uh sing-along to the sound of music no yes oh <laughs> my god <laughs> you've <laughs> never uh i've never seen more guys who are uh, hiv positive <laughs> wearing later hosen in my entire life i really i really have never seen it, oh, it, that many god. guys Oh, and everyone's singing, and you're holding stuff up. You know, you gotta, you gotta do a lot. It's like the Rocky Horror Picture Show, except for it's the Sound of Music. And Drew, you probably know. I've never even seen the Sound of Music. See, really? Well, that's it. That's North Hollywood. Oh my God! Well, what are you gonna do when you're me? Oh, I right. mean, I mean, you grow up. There's no VCRs. There's no TV. I mean, you got a TV, but the Sound of Music's on Channel 11 at four in the morning, and and. It's in the oh. theater, but it's in the theater in like 1965. Yeah, uh, you missed it. Yeah, so brown paper packages tied up with strings. The whole thing. That's what people throw hold up. The whole thing. They do. They do the. You know, you hold up the Edelweiss flower oh. and the whole. Oh the whole. It's a three-hour movie. Edelweiss. Thank God there was. Edelweiss. Thank God there was booze on sale there. <laughs> But I'll tell you, they know it too. Like, the, I mean, you can buy a bottle of wine there, but it's twenty six bucks for like a, a four dollar bottle of wine. I'll put it this way: it's twenty six bucks for a bottle of wine that has a synthetic cork. Oh, it's like a rubber screw top, cork. Screw top. No, not screw top, but that the cork that's yeah. uh, you know made out Plastic. of uh, recycled uh, um, shopping cart wheels. And you're fighting over this bottle too. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm hitting myself by uh, hour number three and hearing uh, Edelweiss come out again. That's the whole thing about the sound of music. They don't tell you. They sing three or four songs three or four times. Uh -huh. They keep going. I was yeah, I was whacking myself in the head with the bottle. But uh, yeah, I'll tell you. Well, who now? I don't. Those I almost know how to party. Now I cannot think of one of your screwed up friends that have gotten you to go to that. Thing. The Weezes uh, old lady got no. some like, tickets from work or something like that. And I think oh, everyone, he must have gotten it. it was ev just... Everyone knew I would protest, so they so I got sort of a sketchy thumbnail version of what was going to be going on. He must have made a bong out of the railings there for... <laughs> oh, please. Oh, come on. He must have gone insane. There was no reason for blowing... Pot. A, there, no one was blowing weed in the whole place. Yeah, breeze it was crazy. No, he was fine. How dare you. And here's the very worst part. The box that you get holds six, six. people. Yeah. So there's always that oddball couple. And then there's... And that oddball couple 
is uh, this chick and a, and a gay guy. Also from work. Yeah, but do you understand what it's like watching The Sound of Music with 17,000 homos and you can't make a crack about it because the guy sitting in front of you is gay? Do, do you know what I'm saying? And they're holding up the anal vice and, you know, you want to change it into anal vice. And that was the only thing. That's the only thing you could do. Well, you know, when you get stuck somewhere and all you can do is make fun of where you're at to the person that's next to you, except for the person who's next to you is is one of the people from where you're at. And you can't say anything. Now you're stifled. Do you know what I'm talking about? I bet they would have had a good sense of humor about it. You can't crack any fag jokes when you got a gay guy sitting right next to you the whole time. And that that's the only humor you could use in that place. Right. The sound of music for three hours long, man. Holy Christ. Chris? You're gay. True, you must have seen it. I mean, being a singer, you probably yeah, I mean, you probably did that production no, in no, high school or something. My daughter loves that film. When did it with the fact that I am gay? Yes. True. When did that come out? Like 65? 65, yeah. All right. Chris? Yep. You're 16? Uh-huh. What's up? Um, all right, well, there's this girl that uh, I met at work about a month ago. Um, we've been dating like pretty much since we met, uh, and we're like going out now. Uh... Recently, like within the past, like the last weekend, I guess, Fourth July weekend, she started asking. Hold on a second. I think I, waited, I almost I, I, he lost me. I don't yeah. believe him. I was singing Edelweiss yeah. in my head. But go ahead, Chris. Ask the question. Uh, she started asking if she could, like, if we would have anal sex. Yeah. And I, like, don't really want to. All right. All right, so don't. Um, but... But it's a bogus call, and i I got my <laughs> jack-off friends here, and I've got to push something out of this. Yeah, why do you think it's bogus, Drew? It just, just he, yeah. it almost sounds like he's cracking up as he yeah. asks the question. All right, Chris, yeah. if you don't want to do it, then don't do it. Um, just tell us this was a bogus call so we can move on, please. It really isn't. Uh-oh. Really? He said really, so now I believe him. Okay, look, she wants to do it, you don't want to do it, so don't do it. Well, it's, like, I, yeah, um, all right. Well, what, what What's do you, so what confusing do you want? about do you that? Um, I'm just, uh, I don't know, looking for a way out of it, or... What, or would we, what would we tell a woman if a guy was forcing that on, and we'd say, hey, you don't feel like doing that? Don't do that, that's all, it's fine. Tell her, uh, tell her you killed this bitch once when you gave it to her back door style, <laughs> once in junior high, and you're pretty freaked out about it. All right. All right. Hey, I just want. All right. <laughs> yeah. See, here comes yeah. the bogus part. I don't know. Yeah, he he sounded too uh, melodramatic. Did did he, he not? Louis sounded like he was holding back a laugh somewhere. No. Somewhere I, or tongue okay. in the cheek. Something. There, there was something yeah. very insincere about his right. cadence. That's right. Cassie. Yeah. You're 16. Uh huh. What's up? Well, basically, I need your help on something. All yeah. right. Um, every time I have sex with any sexual partner, afterwards I end up passing out. How long afterwards? Like it, between five and twenty minutes. Is that when you sort of get up and start walking around, or while you're lying there? Well, I get up and walk around basically. And then do you get lightheaded and fall down? Basically, I like just I get dizzy and then I pass out, and when I come back, it's really hard to breathe. Well, wait heart? a minute. Wait, you you pass out while you're on your feet? Yeah. So she goes down. Yeah, I just completely go limp. And why haven't you had this evaluated? I don't really know. Is your heart beating really fast when you wake up? No, it's just I don't really measure my heartbeat. I'm trying to breathe at the time. Yeah, but if you were if you were aware of your heart fluttering in your chest at 150 beat per minute, you know <laughs> I what I mean? You think would. It's beating fast. Okay. I didn't just say no. What's your screwball? Okay. Oh, I'm not a screwball. Oh, now you are. I don't mean. And how do you pass out when you're on your feet and not have stitches in your head if you've done this a few times? Because I warned my partners before. How do you know it's coming? It just happens every time. And they just follow you around with their arms out in front of them like Frankenstein, <laughs> so when you fall, they can grab you? No, I don't go very far because I know it's going to happen. But I need your help wondering if there's anything I can do to stop it. And also, <laughs> like, not too long ago this week, uh, I had another sexual partner and he made me have my first orgasm and after that I didn't pass out. I was wondering if you guys knew what it was or if there's so, uh, the orgasm released the uh 
tension that she had that makes her pass out up her spinal cord or brain and cause her to pass out. Look, I, I, Cassie, look. I would say this was bogus if this weren't a chick on the other line. Uh, look, Cassie, look. You're asking us to correct something. We have no idea what's happening. You have to go get this evaluated. This could be anything from a major and potentially life-threatening cardiac condition mm. to a seizure disorder. Really? And that God knows what's causing that. So it, this absolutely categorically needs evaluation. Now, could this all be on an emotional basis? Yeah, it's possible. But absolutely, first and foremost, medical conditions need to be ruled out immediately. Okay. Immediately. You've got, I mean, this, this kind of thing can be a sign of very, very serious heart problems. Really? Yeah. Ouch. And so in terms of getting this to stop, it's, first let's figure out what it is. All right. So you got to go see your doctor. Absolutely. Right and Drew, So, Drew, when you're passing out, that's not a brain thing. It's a heart thing. You're it, not it pumping can be a blood. Well, the, the way she described this, that she's you know exerting herself, then she gets up, then she gets dizzy, I mean lightheaded. Right. And then she goes down. And that more often than not is a cardiac or at least cardiovascular type of thing. So a seizure thing is something up in your noggin. Yep. And uh, a cardio thing is something about your heart. It's not pump. It's not getting the juice up to your head. Precisely. And uh, you stand out. You stand up, and uh, you go down. Uh, right. It could be something like a, what's called a vasovagal. Like lots of things it can be. Yeah, but, but the but most she, important things rule out a real serious but rhythm. The point is, she had that orgasm, and now she's cured. Yeah. Well, there you go. Cassie, wait a minute. Didn't we just talk to a Cassie? Oh, is that the, is this another Cassie? That was yeah, different. That was this is Casey. Oh, this is Casey. Oh, okay. Holy Christ. Hello. Hey. Well, I guess there's just one ass difference there. What's up, baby? Um. Well, see, I was with my boyfriend for eight months. Mm-hmm. And um, it was all going well, I guess. And then he broke up with me a little while ago. And ever since I've been very incredibly depressed and. I've had cutting problems. And you had cutting before all this depression? I was cutting before, but not okay. so intensely. All right, so what are we doing about this? Nothing. I, I, don't, I don't know. What have you done for your cutting in the past? Nothing. No. I haven't told anybody. All right, but you, you understand that's a sign of pretty serious psychological distress, right? Mm -hmm. And then now that you're depressed from this recent loss, which is enough of a stress just by itself, all of these other pre-existing things are ma magnifying. So he dumped you? Yeah. Why did he dump you? Um, my parents and, yeah, they just didn't like him. So he so dumped you because your parents didn't like him? They said that I could never see him again. Oh, well, that's, mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. kind of like you dumping him? Um, I don't think so. I just, see, I argue and argue with my parents all the time. And Shocking. Yeah, but and it why? wasn't his idea to leave you, right? Yeah. Well, why why did your parents say you could never see him? They just didn't like him. Why didn't they like him? They didn't like the way he dressed. How did he dress? He, how did he, he dressed like a punk. And, and how did he act? He was real smart mouth. All right. Can you understand <laughs> they might not like that so much? Yeah. Okay. Also, uh, he was probably uh, like a work associate of the dad. He's probably in his 40s or something, right? <laughs> how old is he? He's 14. Uh, 14? <laughs> Hold on a second. What? I, listen, this Casey, first off, what 16-year-old chick likes a 14-year-old? Mm. But a 16-year-old chick who wants to screw with her parents likes a smart mouth punk, punk, who's 14, to come in and chew on mom and dad for a while. Yeah. And then they get to sort of do the victim thing. Right. Hey, Casey? Yeah? What do you, you must really hate your parents. I'm 13. Okay. Oh, it says 16 up on the screen. There you go. It makes a little more sense. Now it's all coming into focus, baby. Uh -huh. I was completely wrong. But you still must hate your parents, right? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. So what do you, who do you hate more, your mom or your dad? My mom. Why? What, what does she do? Uh, nothing. She just, they treat me like I'm 10 years old and, yeah. Do they have money? Yes. Yeah, I could tell this is, uh, this wasn't a poor girl. Huh. Oh. I have no idea. Huh. Just this this isn't one of those things, Drew, it, where this ain't uh, like sort of booze and hillbilly no, parents. Yeah, this yeah. is a doctor, lawyer, don't pay attention. Right. Try to try to throw Control, money at the prom. Yeah. Controlling. Controlling, yeah. Controlling maybe thing. alcoholic mom, but uh, she's uh, she's got that sort of responsible in the community. Yeah. Let's see if we can figure this out. Casey? Yeah. What do your parents do for a living? My mom's a teacher. And my dad's a cop. Aha! Hmm. You see exactly what I said, except for the teacher and cop part. <laughs> <laughs> Cops are trouble, though. 
<laughs> yeah. Teachers. I don't know. What's she teach? P.E. Oh, lesbian. <laughs> okay. So, Casey, yeah. you got to stop cutting on yourself. Mm-hmm. you got to get a little therapy. Mm-hmm. And stop defying your parents. Stop giving them a hard time. I know they're a pain in the ass. But it, it, it's really, it's like an inmate giving the warden a hard time, and you got five years left. Right. Hard time to do. It's you know bad, what I mean? Bad strategy. It's a, it's, it really is a horrible strategy. Just make nice and see if we can get some time out, uh, time off for good behavior. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh-huh, or don't right. do it. Whatever. <laughs> well, see, I'm trying to get over my boyfriend. But All right. Well, listen. Uh, you, you need to get some help with this because mm-hmm. you obviously have got some very significant problems just based upon your previous history of cutting. Now that you're depressed from the recent loss, all this is coming to bear. The cutting is getting worse. Your ability to manage the feelings are un, 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 impossible. Yeah. So, you know, either talk to a counselor at school or ask your parents for a referral to someone. Get seen by this. You needn't suffer alone with this. And, and listen, all you uh, screwed up young kids who are listening to my voice right now, stop screwing with your parents. Huh. Just make nice with them and get the hell out of the house. And then later on, you can become a stripper, a porn star, and go lesbian. There's a myriad of things you can do. Find a race that they detest and start <laughs> dating that race. It, no, well, you have the rest of your life to pay them back. There, Believe there's me. A, there's a new list here for you, Adam, a list of how to piss your parents off. Yeah. yeah? I, I could probably get it down to, like, uh, you know those cards, those little laminated cards that chicks need yes. because they can't figure out how much to tip? Right. Little, little, little cheat cards. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, guy would never admit to uh, owning one of those. Uh. Chick, you sit, you sit with her all day. The bill was uh, twenty dollars. What do you tip? It's like fifteen percent. Well, I have no idea. Well, look, uh, here's a hint. It's under twenty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you really got to break it down with them. Ten dollars. What is that? That's half. Okay, so that's how many percent? <laughs> Chick. Uh, the day uh, I'll tell you, the day uh, someone sees me uh, looking at one of those how much to tip cards or uh, planting bulbs or talking about bulbs, I want you to put a bullet in my planting head. bulbs. I, I was just think I was fantasizing before you got here tonight about what life will be like when you have kids. <sighs> oh my God! Oh my! You'll be planting bulbs. Mm-hmm. That's how I know when. Listen, I just got done with my uh, nephews, and yeah. uh, they, they, I wrestled these two mongrels for uh, for like an hour. They just beat the crap out of me. And then I got an earful <laughs> from my sister for talking about her on the air or oh, something. Oh, 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 it's always a disaster. <laughs> what did he... <laughs> Listen, I'd like to talk about it, but I can't. What, what did you say? Well, let me just say this. <laughs> let, let me say this. Oh boy! Uh, my sister gave me a, a earful about uh, you know calling her kids Nazis or something and making fun of their names and this that and the other, which I don't really remember. I don't think I called I mean, them Nazis. Yeah, you, you called her husband a Nazi. Well, yeah. but in a, in a in a playful way. Yes. But he, here's here's my point. I, I like her. Uh, I like her husband. Here here's the point. I knew she didn't hear it. Oh, firsthand. Yeah, they never do. Yeah. I say whatever I want with total impunity on this show because they don't listen. My family, no one has a radio, right. or they have one, or they can't figure it out. Right. You know, my dad. My dad. Went, when I asked my dad if he wanted to come by and do the radio show a couple of years back, he suggested that he come by at uh, Friday, on Friday six. about seven thirty. Yeah. That, that's how big a fans. Yeah, how big a fan he is. Yeah. I know no one in my family listens to the show except for my grandma, and I can take her because she's you know confined to a wheelchair practically now. <laughs> But I said to my sister, the first thing I said to her was, I know you didn't, you know, she said, I heard you saying this. I said, no, no, I know you didn't. Who told you? And then it's just, okay, somebody told whatever. But what is that impulse? And listen, all you rotten people out there, and especially women, because you have this impulse in spades, in spades, in spades. Stop telling people stuff that they don't need to hear. You know that impulse? I heard your brother talking right. on the radio last night. I thought you should know. Right, he right. He called the entire family Nazis. Right, he right. said you're fat. Called the kids gay. He made fun of you. They they make it worse. A, they'll, they'll never give you the straight story because they never can because there's never a context. Yeah. Number one. Yeah. So whatever you said, it's going to be worse, and they have to convey it. And it always comes from that BS Hey, I was concerned. Hey, right. I thought you should know. Right. Kiss my ass, you weak, spineless sons of bitches. I'd like to beat the crap out of all of you. And, and yeah, what? producer Ann has oh. this gene running strong through her family, too. But all you people, and especially you chicks, because chicks got this gene, 
There are a handful of guys who got it, too. That, I just thought you should know, so I'm going to tell somebody something that's going to drive them nuts that can never really be proved or disproved or whatever. Stop it. You're doing no work. You're weak, worthless people. Take a good look in the mirror. And, and try to figure out what your goddamn motivation is. Right. And don't give me that, I thought you should know, because that's BS. You're yeah. weak, worthless people. Slime bags. You deserve horrible deaths, you idiots. Little fire started talking in everyone's ear. Drives me nuts. People do this to me all the time. Adam said, Adam said, Adam said, Adam. Oh, shut up, you hoes, you hags. Just put a pistol in your mouth, would you? And just help us all. You're miserable now. We got to be miserable. Is that how life works? No, it's 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 envy. It's we. I'm I am elevated by breaking you down. Yeah, but you guys are like you're like little pixies that uh, flutter around. Except for you don't put pixie ducks out there. You put manure <laughs> and rancid goat ass out there. Stop it. I wonder though, do people do this to you, Drew, at all? In what way? They say things like he that. He doesn't say anything I, bad. I, I, I won't. Well, no. <laughs> I know what he's talking about, though. I, I, you know what I mean? I can relate to what he's saying, so I know it must have happened to me somewhere. It's, it's humans at their worst. Yeah. At their worst. Just stop it. Jesus Christ. Let's take a break. All right. You can cool down. We'll be back. All right. Hey, everybody. Love line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. All right. Let's uh, hop back to the phones and uh, speak to... Uh, Adam, you notice why I don't bang my, my coffee cup when I've got this thing right under me where it belongs? Hello? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what is it? What's up? I want an Drew, award for that. Yeah, Drew wants a plaque because he hasn't whacked the microphone with his it's coffee it's mug. What I've been saying all these years, minutes. which is you put the stuff. It's not like I'm. You know. Listen, Drew, you should have put this piece of carpet under your microphone so I wouldn't have to hear this for the last uh, six years. Wesley? Hello? What's up? No, I'm just calling because I'm sick of my Kurdish girlfriend. Like, we've been dating for about, what, eight months? and uh, uh, Eight and a half, actually. Yeah, more like that, or for real. Hell, because she won't go past, like, oral sex or anything. Mm -hmm. It's all this stuff about how she has to be with the guy she really loves, and it's got to be the perfect time. And Jeez. All right, well, there you go. Supposed to mean a lot of crap to her and all this stuff. Okay, well, she's very clear about it. And how old is she? she uh, seventeen. Seventeen. All right, that's all good. Well, that's what she wants. You got to support that. What he wants to do? Well, yeah. I don't know, man, because it makes me feel like I'm not the guy she likes or wants to be with or anything. You know. Um, she may. She, she may have may, a point there. Yeah, that's that's one. That's a possibility. Number one. Or she may be telling you that she wants to wait till marriage, and if that's not what No, you... actually, it's not a religious reason or anything like that. She... I didn't say religious. I just say she may... Well, yeah, she said she didn't care about that, you know? About the marriage? Yeah, she just said it's got to be, like, all this perfect stuff, you know? Well, if she, if you've been with her for... <clears throat> it's, it's, it's very curious, Drew, because Wesley sounds like a delight. A delight. Yes. I can't believe she's not uh, giving you anal at this point, Wesley. <laughs> I know I would. At eight months, if she's saying to you, listen, I don't want to give up my virginity t to somebody unless they're special, yeah. maybe maybe that's, that's an indication that's that it's time to close up shop on the relationship. Not either that or she's looking for more out of the relationship at this point and or looking for something that she's afraid to tell you about or embarrassed to tell you about. But be that as it may, it's not where you're at, not where you want to go with the relationship, so maybe it's not the right time, right person. You think she wants uh, out of the relationship, Wesley? Oh, hell no. No way. No, not with Wesley. Who could leave all that? Yeah. You kidding? Yeah. Why not? Why doesn't she want out? Because I give her everything she wants. Um, uh -huh. When I stop my fingers, my I, my friends or my dad or my anywhere we go wherever she wants to go to eat or have some fun or like hang out with me and I my bedroom or whatever, chill out, you know, drink whatever. Okay. All right, Wesley. Well, you're uh, you're all the man she could ever dream of. Yet she doesn't want to have sex with you. Yeah, there we, you go. we don't have the answer to that, but I'm nor do I suggest that you really push her or coerce, coerce her into it because yeah. it will not make for a happy woman. All right, yeah. Wesley, stay there in Florida, would you? All right, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, that place is getting worse, Florida. <laughs> Listen, look, uh, can we just turn Florida into a penal colony? Saddam Hussein's stepson shows up there for flight lessons again. Look, Drew, how, how many times that? I have to say that all evil either emanates from Florida 
or resides there at some point in its during its evil reign. <laughs> right. Look, and anybody who's listening to me, who's uh, currently looking for somebody, uh, you, you know, any any uh, felon that's on the lam, anybody that's caused that, Florida, go to Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Any any uh, any dads who uh, aren't paying child support, whatever, go to Florida. They're all there. They're either born there or they die there. It's always Florida. It's always something with Florida. I don't know what that is, but I don't. Know, it's m maybe the humidity. <laughs> you know, you know how the bugs grow bigger over right, there. Yes. The giant cockroaches and sure. mosquitoes and alligators and stuff like that. Why wouldn't that same state produce some of the worst people? I mean, look at it this way. You got the you got horrible you got horrible poisonous snakes and water moccasins praying you got, mantis you got praying mantises you you have all these horrible insects and these horrible reptiles that are all, there's more man eating stuff going on in Florida than in any Hammer other state sharks down there. it's all horrible yeah. over there right yeah. well, wouldn't it stand a reason that maybe they're breeding some bad people too why not it makes perfect sense to me so all right I, all I'm saying is if you're in Florida now just stay there you guys duke it out. Eventually, I'm going to fence it off, and uh, we'll start a penal colony. That's what we need. It'll be like uh, French Guiana uh, during the uh, turn of the century. Just extend it from Guantanamo Bay up north. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, it'll be my little devil's island. Right. Michael? Hey, what's up, Adam? What's up there, Michael? Adam, you are the man. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that crank anchors is the bomb, man. All your shows are tight. Oh, thanks. Well, uh, oh, it, you know, it's uh, it's great that you bring that up because uh, crank anchors <laughs> is on, on right now. Sure, uh, I know. Buddy. I have it in the background. Good times. So, yeah. What's anyway, up? man, I've been dating this girl, you know, met her at a club. And what she does is she's an internet, they call it internet modeling. Mm -hmm. But what it is is it's like phone sex, but it's like interactive through a streaming video, you know. Oof. And they talk to you. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and they type to you on chat. Well, you know, you give them their number. Right. Their number, and then they call you and they, they do stuff for you with the instruments and all that. Instruments? Well, Speculums? Oh. No, dildos and cedos. They do right. what you want. All right. Anyway, I'm not really comfortable with it because it makes me a little uncomfortable because oh. you, know, you guys see. I can't understand how much, why. How much does she get paid for this? Well, I guess the guys online pay with tokens and it's i don't know but it works out to like six bucks a minute or something and she gets like half i think it is so she gets about three bucks a minute she has like 180 bucks an hour no but there's a bunch of guys watching for example i mean because it's on a streaming video and the guys pay to watch her so, so it could be thousands of dollars an hour well, no, no, it because make that much money because the the people who uh, facilitate it make the most money, so they probably get like thousand. She probably gets like a couple hundred a week, you know. Yeah, but she's for diddling herself in front of the computer, basically. Well, well no, well, she's in front of a camera. She has a computer and a phone. I see. I see. Is it. this done? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> is this is this done somewhere other than her house? Does she go to a studio or something? Well, yeah. She's she's going to a place now where a guy has it in his place. One of the facilitators who makes the you know most of the money. But right. you can have a setup at your house, which she's 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 going to do. Sure. She can have it. Sure. She can do it. At, she got you know, that at home. That right? entrepreneurial spirit. Is she going to? Is she a stripper? Well, I mean, that's what she's doing on. But on I mean, has she there. been? Has she been actually a stripper in the past? Uh, n not that I know of. But All right. Where, where'd you meet her? A club. Okay. How long a have you been club. seeing her? Uh, no, no, not a strip club. No, um, probably like three weeks. All right. Well, yeah. listen, don't, you know, she got some issues. Yeah. Don't get no, her. But that's not the question, though. All right. What's the question? Yeah, I know. Oh, I know. Don't get her pregnant, but it's <laughs> that when she... And she she comes home, she's like all like sexed out, you know? Right, right sure. I sexed mean, up or sexed out? She's sexed out. Like she's just done with you oh, know, men well, and sex. Well, but listen, but somebody that's, somebody that's engaging in this kind of relationship with men already has got some stuff about men going on. But and, I mean, if she's like doing this all day, I mean, she, I, I mean, just one more? I mean. No, this is not about, you understand, emotionally, she doesn't like men. She needs to control them. She needs to act out in these sort of ruthless ways with them. And uh, being intimate and physical with somebody she cares about is not something that she's probably particularly capable of. So it's it's sort of ironically the women that do all are the, the sexiest and talk the sexiest and act the sexiest are the probably least, the least into sex. Yeah, that's just, it's just a it's a way of expressing contempt really for men, controlling them and 
Yeah. But but it's it's sort of like in a, in a way it's like guys who brag a lot or insecure kind of except they hate men for participating are sort of scared with them you know they don't like that men participate with them in this little drama they put play out yeah <laughs> and many, like it's like many strippers are lesbians right it, it's weird um, it's it's sad and ironic that most women that are in a sort of sex game whether it be uh, porn or strippers. Or doing this internet business, aren't real fond of men. Right. Doesn't mean you can't get laid. It mm -hmm. just means there's issues. And that's the reason it got them into it. Or, in the first or, or they're sex addicts, which is a different thing. But 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 here's here's the math, Drew. Yeah. Daddy did something. That's right. Now maybe he diddled them, maybe he beat on them, or maybe he abandoned them. But Daddy did something to them. Mm -hmm. That gets them into the sex game. That wires them. And now you're screwed mm -hmm. because you have a penis. Mm-hmm. All right, so there's a little catch-22 there. Doesn't slow me down when I'm at the uh, in the lab dance, so I'll tell you what. Savannah? Hey. Speaking of porn. <laughs> no. Oh, no. No, I mean, there's a very famous uh, porn star named Savannah. Yes, I killed I know. herself. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, watch out. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm 21, and um, I met this 35-year-old guy, and we went out on a date. And uh, on this date, he told me that he had a girlfriend. And I'm like, okay, well, that's nice. And so we've been seeing each other for about three months. And I'll ask him, hey, have you um, gotten rid of your girlfriend? And he's like, well, you know, I don't love her. I love you. You know, all this stuff about how, you know, we're going to get married and have kids and stuff. You and him. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and so. Um, You've been dating him how long? About three months. Uh -huh. And he can't get rid of this girlfriend. Now, he yeah. says girlfriend. Yeah, I, I read wife. I read wife, too, because yeah. this is the kind of guy who wouldn't bring it up. Right, unless he had a wife. Ooh. That's it for sure. Yeah, I mean, it, it's sort of like... He's putting you on notice. When, when, when somebody says... Um, when somebody admits they made out with somebody... Right. you got to figure finger banging. Minimum. Yeah. Minimum finger banging. <laughs> So when a when a sleazy guy says, uh, "Listen, I I got to be up front with you," I have a girl. A guy's not real. A guy's already cheating on somebody. Wants to be up front, lay yeah. cards on the table. Why would he bother if he, he's if he's if he's a cheater? Why doesn't he just cheat? You know what I mean? Why would he Why would he get into it with this yeah. Savannah unless it was a wife? Okay, so uh, we're hmm. thinking wife. Now, does he use the girlfriend as an excuse sometimes? Um. No, not Why would really. he bring it up? At all, right. Why? If he's getting out of this relationship... Let's just, well, let's just say he's dating. You, you know, why Why bring that up? Yeah. But they're like business partners and stuff, so it's just really mm. complicated. What's the business? Movie business. Movie business? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, like, produce movies and stuff. They, I think they make uh, tutorials for computer companies. <laughs> Is that right? Am I right? Uh, you're always right. Where they, where they make porn movies? No, no, no. It, nothing has to do with porn. Get off of what it. What do they do? They just produce movies and like movies we, and stuff. And what? And videos and stuff? Music videos. Okay. What movies and have they produced? I, I can't really say. But right. Not, not because she doesn't want to out this guy, but because you've never heard of him. Right. <laughs> No, you've seen his stuff, but wow. I just, I'd rather not Hold say. on a second, Drew. Mental Oof. note, never makes Savannah laugh again. Okay. It's gonna. It's not going to be easy for me. God. I'm such a pro. Hey, Savannah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> this guy, how long does he say he's been with his, uh, quote, girlfriend? About a year. About a year. And they have different last names, so. Okay. And no kids, as far as you know? No kids. They live together? Yes, off and on. She lives with yeah. her mom and she lives with him sometimes. Off and on means uh, he's uh, off you and on top of her when he's <laughs> living with her, and then he gets off of her and he gets on top of you. No, he does not get on top of me. Thank you. Oh, no sex? No. No sex? No. You, because he's uh, still with this other woman? Exactly. So you, you've drawn that line? Yes. Huh. But you get moral sex, right? No. Huh? No. Never? Never? He gave me oral sex the last time, and that was the only time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Anderson did that. <laughs> That's not nice. <laughs> Crazy laugh. Uh, it's so like a performing the uh, Heimlich on a fat kid, that laugh. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, right, so, uh, so you perform, uh, what do you give him, a hand job? 
No, I've never even... <clears throat> no. Okay, so you want to know... If and when he's going to get rid of this uh, woman, or what you should do? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, yes. I think I think you got to lay it down. If he if he's serious, you got to say to him, "Look, we're not we're not dating until you guys break it off." Clarify I've this. done that, and he said, "Oh, I'll call you next week, and things will change." And then he'll call me, you know, the next week, and nothing's changed. Well, then you don't go out with him. That's it. You've got you've got to follow through. You you can't set a, the limit down and then cave immediately. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to size this guy up a little bit. Oh no. Does he uh, does he wear cowboy boots or carry one of those man purses? <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> oh, that's gold. Not nice. does, it, does he have a watch? Does he have a gold rope chain bracelet, or is he wearing a, like a pinky ring or anything? Big watch. No. Big watch. No. Big diver watch. It's never seen the water. No, I don't even think he owns a watch. Does he wear vests of any kind? No, no vests and no fanny packs, mm. thank you. No fanny packs? No. All right, what kind of cars do you drive? Some convertible? Corvette? It's an SUV. Oh, man. <laughs> We're off on this guy. I can't get a, can't get yeah. a beat on yeah, this guy. Yeah, Okay, but uh, you tell him, you lay the law down. Yeah, listen, if this, if this is... If and this don't is, cave. Yeah, if this is something that is <clears throat> reasonably healthy and it's actually evolving the way you think it is, and if he is as committed as he has said he is, he will follow through. Otherwise, there's nothing to motivate him to change the status quo. I mean, he doesn't want to get in a conflict with this business partner, girlfriend of his. He's got to end it, cut it off clean, and, and get on with your relationship. Yeah. How weird. What a, just, a, just a murky, murky set of relationships. Yeah, tonight? Well, those, that one particularly. Yeah, but tonight in general yeah, it's seems unclear. a little unclear. You can't get uh, can't get a good beat on people tonight. Yeah. All right, you know what kind of guy I don't like? I don't like that man purse guy. I haven't seen one of those guys in a long time. Yeah, well he's he's on the way out. Thank mm. thankfully, thanks to the efforts of people like me, we've almost had him eradicated. I Although think I heard there were a bunch of the Florida. Bowl. No, they're in Florida. Oh, okay. We we uh, now can find them to Florida. Oh, okay. The man purse guy is not really the gay guy. That's the no, I know. I hey know. world. I'm an entrepreneur. Right. You know that guy? The guy, I don't like a guy who does this. A guy who does anything with his money that's a little weird other than putting it in his wallet. I don't like the clip guy, and I don't like the peel-off guy. The guy who carries the uh, clip or the sort of a uh, half, you know, the, the fold of bills, and he likes to peel them off. He likes to pull them off and peel them, pull them off the top. I like the guy with the, the too much around the money. I don't like the guy who's got that weird, just, here's what guys should have. Wallets. That's, that's it. it. That's Period. it. When I'm in charge, that's it. It's against the law. <laughs> Carry anything other. I got to yeah, see. I, like I Not only, here's what I'll do, too. If, if I pull you over and you don't have your wallet, I'll check your jeans and see uh, how the wear pattern is oh, yeah. in your back pocket. Very important. Because that'll show if you're carrying a wallet or not. Mm -hmm. And because some guys will actually not use wallets, but uh, take blocks of wood and uh, and just smooth them over and put them in the back pocket to get the wear pattern sure. going for that. I'll do uh, fiber testing on the insides of the pockets to make sure I see some eel skin or some uh, kid skin or something like that or leather. Okay. All right. And the Velcro wallet will be uh, outlawed oh, as well. Oh, really? Those yeah. sports wallets? No Don't good. like those. Oh, okay. No. They do not pass muster. All right. All right we're going to take a little break. And we'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That's uh, Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Woo! Yeah! Tell you what, Trisker. Yo. We got ourselves a 50,000 watt flamethrower here, man. I'll tell you. Hmm. Let me tell you. Let me tell you the mission statement of the show, man. We take no prisoners. Hey, let me ask you. I'm erasing you. the song right now. All right. Good. But you, what, you, you know how you always talk about, uh, you complain about things being, like, not being aware that you're on the radio and not paying attention to things when you're talking to the mic? Mm -hmm. Something like, something like this. <laughs> I'm not sure that yeah, but you comes under the understand. umbrella of paying attention to the microphone on the radio. That's part of the persona. That's I see. That's the, uh, it, no one cares, I'm a rebel, I do my own thing. Got it, okay, got this it. This ain't your morning zoo. I thought it was you breaking into that guy, and then, okay. You know, this ain't Casey Kasem, man. I see. You were in, this you're, is you're, hard you're, your method. radio, man. Method performing. I don't guy. play by the rules. You understand? He, 
You're right. Okay. Make your own rules. That's right. I make my own rules. And here's the, here's the next thing. As I've said many times, I not only do I not play by the rules when it comes to work and radio and that kind of stuff, I never play by the rules for anything. Like, if you're playing checkers with me, right. I'm liable to grab your pieces and start moving them. Or you're, or, an, you're an anarchist. Or if you're winning, I'll just slide my arm across the board and knock all the pieces off. Right. See, it's not it's just not having to do with police work. There are no rules. There's zero rules. There's zero rules. That's yeah. right. I'll turn left on a red arrow. Any questions? Amanda? Yeah? You're 16. What's up? 17. Um, oh. My boyfriend, Scott, we've been together for almost a year now. Mm -hmm. And um, we're intimate, and he has quite a large penis, and, you know, it's starting to hurt. Like, I thought, okay, the first couple times it's going to hurt, mm -hmm. but it's continually hurting. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how, I mean, I can't be like, hey, see ya, you know, because I really, you know, I'm like in love with this dude, and I can't be like, you know, I don't know. I'm a big boy. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to deal with it. Who do you figure is in the room with her right now? Well, I'm guessing Scott and yeah. his penis. And his jack off friend, maybe? No, Scott's out of town, but. Where is he? He's in Pismo. All right. That's, that's a t yeah. good specific that's answer. That's a tough one to pull out of the air. Pismo? Yeah, I couldn't pull Pismo out. Pismo Beach? Or Pismo, or Mount Pismo? Pismo Beach. Okay, just checking. It's on a clam dig, huh? Using that yeah, big uh, penis of his like a divining rod. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, using lubrication and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's been like a year, and it's just a continuous problem. Yeah. I don't know how to handle it. All right. Now, what if you told him um, to slow down a little bit and let you set the sexual cadence a little bit? You know what I mean? I, no. I, yeah, I guess I could try that. I'm just not that type of person, you know. I'm afraid to offend him. No, you know? yeah. let's say you're not. Oh, no, I wish someone would have impulse. offended me with a large yeah. penis comment. No one will offend. You will not offend him with anything you want to do to make things more comfortable for you. <clears throat> just period, period. Offend him. Well, especially, are you really think you're going to offend a guy with the big penis conversation? Yeah, like he's going to get indignant and slap you with a white glove. How dare you, ma'am? Uh, you'll be hearing from my seconds. Right. My my penis has been dishonored. This this, is, this would be the greatest conversation I've ever had in my life. I'd, yeah, uh, you forget it. You might as well just... <laughs> well, not it's not going to happen, but if somebody did try to begin a large penis conversation then, with me, they, I would go get... I would say, hold on, let me get my camcorder, let me well, get my that, recorder. But then Speaking you'd be, of the microphone. You'd be angry because it would be so disingenuous. You'd, it'd be like... You know what I'm saying? Mm. I just angry. dumped the water down my okay. throat. Is okay. that in character? Or was that? Yeah, no, oh, it's okay. part of okay. it's part of the real radio. Oh, okay. Cherie, hi. You're 17. Yeah. What's going on? Um. Okay. My parents found out I was gay like two months ago, and now all of a sudden they think I have borderline personality disorder. Okay, you're 17. Yeah. How'd they find out? Um. That's a long story. Basically, I moved with guardians like. Two years ago, and my guardians ended up telling them. You moved in with, like, foster parents? Mm, no, it was more like caretakers. Why do you need caretakers? What's wrong with your parents? Um, that's a long story. I, I just, I was on my own for a while, and I ran away for a while, so... Why? I didn't get along with them. Mm. Well, those are sort of borderline behaviors, so already it has nothing to do with your sexual orientation. That's just, you know, borderline back acting out. Now, why didn't you get along with them? Were they... Were they Abusive? No, they were just really, really controlling. Um, things like I couldn't dial the phone unless they dialed it for me. Just I could never do anything, and I thought maybe I could they're just being ever. polite. What? I appreciate when someone dials my phone. <laughs> yeah. So they dialed it for you. Well, well they dialed it for you because you've been calling uh, some no, guy no, no. who lives in Idaho or bill. something. I never ran up their bill. I never did. Okay, but you're making calls they didn't want you to make. No, it was nothing like that. It was just like to normal friends around the area. They they, they had no reason to think that you were calling a male escort or some <laughs> drug dealer or anything like that. You never gave them any reason to believe anything. They just insist on dialing the phone for you. Right. No. <laughs> it sounds crazy, I know. Well, it does, yeah. Well, someone's crazy. Right. Maybe both of you. Right. I'm sure if we spoke to them, they'd have a completely different version of you and what's going on 
And we would suggest that you do your therapy and listen to whoever right. wants to help you. If you don't have a borderline disorder, what do you have to worry about with someone trying to evaluate what can be done to help you? Well, what, what exactly is borderline? I don't even know anything about it. Well, you can look it up on the web. It, it's, it's a disorder. It's a sort of a primitive personality disorder. People get arrested in development. It's whereby, a Madonna, yeah, it's a Madonna but, song. It, well, basically they have trouble controlling they have very wide-ranging experiences of feelings. They can't control feelings. They feel empty all the time. They have very chaotic, dramatic relationships. They can't, they can't be alone, basically. Right. So a feeling of emptiness all the time. Okay. So, uh, Cherie, uh, do what the man tells you to do. Yeah. And that goes for all of you. We'll be back. <laughs> Fastest growing LL Radio North America. Uh, oh, yeah. Woo, yeah. Let's man. We got a party going on over here, man. This is a party or tape parts, I like to call it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo, we got a party going on. I'm ace over here, man. I'm sitting in the throne, man. I got 50,000 wine flames over, man. <laughs> Good old Doc Drews sitting on my left, man. Yeah. We a little lightning around tonight, man. I'll tell you, we got it going on over here, man. It is going off. I mean, it is a party over here. I'll tell you what, man. You got me. You got my compadre, Drew, man. We're sitting in a room that was built in 1972, man. And I got myself a half cup of tap water. Woo! Yeah, man, party going on, man. Drew's got himself a Webster's uh, New Dictionary and a world's best uh, uh, animatronic. Anatomy, anatomy chart. I can't read that word upside down. Anatomical. Anatomical charts, man. I got my cell phone sitting out. It's turned off, though, man. I can't interrupt the party. Woo! All right. And go back to the phones, man. Uh huh? Huh? <laughs> You want to break away from this party long enough to help some kids? Yeah. All right, let's break away, and then we'll come back to the party, all right? Okay. Hey, yeah! J- Jimmy. Yeah. What up? 19, Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've been dating a girl for about five months. and Yeah. We've been having intercourse for about four months. Oh, yeah. But she's kind of got a problem. She has no feeling inside. Whoa. What do you mean, no feeling inside? Like she got no the, none of guts, man. She got no emotion. <laughs> well, she says it just feels like pressure, and that's about it. I mean, as far as actual feeling in her vagina, I guess. Whoa! I mean, she has feeling on the outside. Yeah. <laughs> Drew, do you have any feeling inside your vagina? Not much. No, I don't. I have uh, almost none. And. What is it you expect? Have you had a sex with someone else in the past? Yeah. And how did that go? Well, I mean, it went real good. Okay, so <laughs> so this is your second partner, right? No, third. Third partner. Third. Yeah. And this one doesn't get aroused? Well, she does. That's the deal. She does. Yeah, but she doesn't but have she, a climax. Can, right. She can almost get to the breaking point. I guess. All right, well, most 19-year-old women do not have a climax during intercourse. The significant majority do not. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with her. Do you understand that? Okay. So, I mean, what do I do? Well, Ace has I'm, the solution. Hold I've on. I've tried man. everything. Man, you got to give her the velvet buzzsaw, dude. <clears throat> That's my move, man. What? The velvet buzzsaw. Oh, I've done everything. Yeah, man. But you can't go down there with such a sense of urgency, man. You gotta hang loose. You know what I'm saying, well, Brian? Time, time to give the cat and dog analogy. Huh? Okay, all, right, all right. right. I haven't given this one in a while. It's a good one. Yeah, I have many good ones, Julia. I know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Too bad you can't remember them. <laughs> the ones you put there. I know. Thank you. You, uh, but everyone should write this down. Women need. Uh, women are essentially cats, and men are dogs. And dogs like it very different than cats like it. And I don't mean sex. Everything. But I mean... Life. You you see a dog, what do you do? You grab it, you pull its ears, you knock it down, you get it in a headlock, you rub its belly. Pound on its side. You pound on it. Yeah. It likes that. 
I mean, you know, you can you can do this like tails wagging. You can do a thing where you uh, make it. My my friend uh, Chris has himself a black lab that's about uh, thirty pounds overweight. You know, it's like a hundred and ten pound dog, <laughs> and it comes running up to the car. And its tail is so big and so fat and wagging so hard that it's hitting my car fender. <laughs> and it sounds like someone's taking a hammer. It's just like, bonk. It's reverberating through the car. Doink, 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 doink. I thought, right. I thought like I blew a tire or something. Murphy. I take my knuckle. I put my knuckle right in Murphy, right between Murphy's eyes on the bridge and other. Just, just start grinding it on it. Murphy starts pushing back with his head and then I tackle him. You know, he's into it. That's what dogs like. Yeah. Now, you try that on a cat, what do you get? Your ass, your ass scratched off. Yeah, they, you get a, you get, you, uh, detached retina. <laughs> That's what you get. So what do you do with a cat? Cat, you sit down. You want to pet someone's cat? You go into their house, you sit down. You don't even make a move for the cat, just sit down. Cat starts coming around, gets a little curious. Wants to know who this, uh, who this new shin is. Not seen this shin before. Cat circles around a little. You just said, they don't lunge at the cat. That, that, they don't reach. Yeah, you might, you might extend your hand and sort of keep it out there, but in a very smooth you way. You offer. You would offer up your hand. Yes, yes. Nothing violent, nothing sudden, nothing herky-jerky. This is why kids hate cats. That's why cats hate kids. Right. That's why a cat cannot take a three-year-old. They go right on top of the refrigerator when three-year-olds come around because a three-year-old's grabbing them by the tail and running after them. Just sit down. Cat comes by, extend the hand. Cat moves forward, puts a little pressure. Cat will let you know what feels good, too. Right. Dog doesn't do that, if you notice. Dog is just so busy just wrestling waits. with yeah. you. just waits. You do whatever you want to a dog. But a cat lets you know. You start rubbing on a cat. Cat will start putting pressure back on the part that feels good and start leaning into you a little I bit. Even come back around. <clears throat> come back around. That's right. Smooth, rhythmic motions, repetitive, slow. You know, when you, yes, slow and even. When you have a cat on your lap and you want that cat to stay on your lap, you just move your hand. Now you don't go against the grain. You don't break it up. It's not herky jerky. You're don't, not tugging on don't anything. Stare at it. Don't let it know you're looking at it. No. You, look, you make eye contact for a second, but you gotta kind of look away. <laughs> the cat has to. The cat has to sort of feel like it's its idea to be on your lap and to have you petting it. He can stare at you. You can't stare back. That's right. That's right. And no, no big movements. No nothing. Not even a bowel movement. Just nice and easy. Repetitive and repetitive. That's the way you treat a woman. And I get the feeling that a lot of our younger male callers are like, they look at it as, there's an orgasm somewhere in that vagina and by cracky, I'm going to tear it out of there. And it's and, sort of like linear, linear footage of stimulation. In other words, each time there's a penetration, a certain amount of areas travel. And if they travel it enough times, there'll be an orgasm. Yeah, they you look know what I'm Yeah, they treat a vagina like it's uh, Tom Hanks on an island trying to start a fire. That's right. That's not the way to do it. This is really even stay out of the inside of a vagina. Just nice and smooth little circles on the outside. Don't press too hard. Thank you. Brian uh, hey, what's up? You're 16? Yeah. What's up? Hey, um, I just want to say really quick that I think that you're, like, Arab, uh, like, no, you cannot joke, like, the <laughs> most hilarious thing I've ever heard you say. Oh, boy. Oh, really? Yeah, that was, like, that was just, like, crack me up every time I hear it. Well, no, not all right. Yeah. You know, I, I believe that uh, all nations and all people were all equal and we're all the same in God's eyes, but you got to admit those people love to say no more than any other culture. Yeah, I think no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and um, anyway, uh, I've been experiencing some, like, pretty bad pains in my testicles, and it's not when I'm sitting down or anything, Mike. Both, both sides. Um, yeah. Uh, if I'm sitting down, like, right now, I'm sitting down, I'm not feeling anything. But if I run, kind of, or slightly jog, I get, like, stinging, like, pretty much horrible pains right down there. All right, and, well, you got to get that checked out. Yeah. Stinging? Um, well, it's not quite stinging. It's aching. Yeah, it, but it's like it's like a sharp ache, and um, I've developed a, a lump on the side. It's dormant. It doesn't do anything, and it's about the size of a skittle, and it's hard. That's your penis. That, no, that's on the side oh, of the testicle. Okay. And why haven't you had somebody look at that? <laughs> it's um, a skittle. Yeah, I, that's the best analogy I can think of. All right. I'm about I'm about to. I just want to 
No, but ahead of time, I mean, I'm kind of kind of nervous about it because I have no idea what it is, oh, and right. it, it's been growing. So, yeah, right. well, maybe maybe just a varicocele or cystocele, spermatocele is a cyst that can form in there. Could be a tumor, and uh, testicular tumors are completely curable most all the time. Yeah. And it could be infection of, of the epididymis in that area, so it could be nothing. It could be a, even a hernia or a torsion. Well, let's, talk, be checked out. let's talk hernia for a second here, Drew, uh, because as you know, I have the hernia going on oh, myself. That's right. Yeah. Well, I've, been, I've been living with it for about eight years now. Mm-hmm. Seems to be all right. Been a, you know, it's kind of up above, you know, got that nice yeah, bulge. Yeah, that's a different kind. Yeah. But it's kind of going away and it comes back and yeah. sometimes it's bulging out and other times it's just flat. Yeah. And uh, sometimes it's a little tender and then most of the time it's nothing. Uh. But I'm feeling a little dull pain in the nutsack oh. on the uh, hernia side. Really interesting. Yeah. Now it's not, you know where my hernia is. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's not, it's not down in the nutsack. Right. Just a little on the right side, a little uh, comes and goes, a little dull. Does that have any connection to the it's, hernia, possibly? I, I, I don't remember exactly where your hernia is. It's well, possible. I'm not going to show you, but, uh, you know, because modesty prevents me from showing you. But it, it's, <laughs> it's that bulge. It's right, right you know, it's right it's, in that. It's not in the crease. It's no, above it. it's no, above it's like, like it's, it's a, you know that part of you that's uh, almost like uh, like if you started if you took a camera and started panning down you'd think maybe you were looking at a vagina and then oh there's a penis and balls right you know right at the top of the hairline there yes yes yeah half on the hair right, half right, right. on the belly no, kind of thing that shouldn't cause pain in your testing all right. So and then, but that, that, with that kind is tender though that that needs to be operated on what kind what tender and the hernia is tender in that area. Yeah, but it's not tender. Ah, you said it was sometimes tender up there. It comes and goes. Uh, you can, one of these times it might get twisted in there and stuck, <laughs> and that's bad. I was told by a doctor just to wait till it hurts and then go get it operated that's on. That's what I'm telling you. You started telling me it's starting to hurt. No, 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 I'm saying my nut hurts. No, uh, the hernia is You said the hernia fine. hurts once in a while. I'm telling you that my hernia bulge comes and goes and is uh, tender once in a while, but That's like one, no, but but it is no more than it was eight years all ago. Right, okay, all right. And uh, right. once in a while means twice a year for right, right. half a day. All right. Nothing. The, I don't think the nutsack has anything to do with it. All right. What is the nutsack? Then? I have to examine it. Well, it doesn't look like so anything. It's a nutsack. No, 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 no. Well, what would you be feeling for? I mean, I'll do it myself. It's cysts and uh, okay. infections and tumor. What, what kind of infections would you the feel? The can get enlarged. The spermatic cord can be thickened. Man, yeah, maybe I'll try it on myself, and you you talk me down. You know, okay. like a like you're a pilot. Yeah, yeah. And but I'm you're up in the control tower, and I'm landing the yeah. plane. All right, let's get on the phone together. Oh, oh internet. Let's just do it now. Mm. I'll just put my hand down my pants. You have to stand up. Why? Because they have to hang down in order for that to happen. Uh, my nuts hang when I'm sitting. They just Come hang on, down like sort of. Bring it on. All right. Just got a bunch of people in the next room. Uh, they're and they're anticipating this. They look, they're they're all right. Very intrigued. All right. My hand is on my right nut now. Now that's right, you that's where the feeling under is. Under it, you got to sort of grab it like you're squeezing like a fig or something. The whole nut. The whole thing. Just the right nut. Yeah. Can you? You're not reaching right. Well, I got a pretty good sized nut ball in there. <laughs> Never is really the, examine. Is it, is it the same as the other oh, side? Let me see. Oh wait a minute. No, it seems a little bigger. Oh, it seems uh, it seems quite a bit bigger. Eh? Ooh, oh, Jesus Christ! Is there? Bad now, can times. you now, now? Let me get you the picture here. here. Mm-hmm. Now, here's what you're feeling. Okay, wait a second. Yeah, my my right ball feels. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, it feels bigger. All right, that's for real. That's something. Now, oh. as you, I knew this was a bad idea. Uh, God damn it. All right. Can you feel this sort of area up on top? It feels a little scrape right. radio. Drew is uh, pointing to a picture in a book now. Okay. You see what, you, what you area feel, up you feel top? This, just feel if you can feel like a cap sitting on top of it. Oh, you feel, yeah. You feel like a little wormier, a little squir- squirmier area up on top. Now. Yeah, all right. All right. Is that enlarged relative to the other side? No. That's the same. So the whole testicle is enlarged. Yeah, the whole, the whole, the, whole thing, the smooth part, all this, the whole part, thing, the, the seems, egg part. Yeah, it seems like the difference between, uh, you know, like one of those chocolate eggs and mm-hmm. like a, you know, small egg or so. And it's not that big a difference. Yeah, like but, a Cadbury egg versus one of those little. I'd say like a quail egg <laughs> <laughs> versus a Cadbury egg, uh, Cadbury like, chocolate egg. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now, uh, yeah. feel up above the test. You reach from underneath. Reach well, hold on, I just put my thumb in my ass. Hold okay. on. Oh wait a minute, I can't. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is humiliating. Okay. And I'm feeling... All right. You feel the, the little... Again, the kind of 
the cord area. Yeah, but, I do yeah. feel that cord. Right, Jesus. That was, right. You know, that thing was there. That was, <laughs> How many was cords it, do I have? Is there one cord on each egg or two cords? You, you, know, you don't have eggs. There's a whole, there's a whole like cords and there's there's arteries, veins, stuff. Oh, no, we're talking saying yeah. I had eggs. No, go well, how side. many cords? One, two cords, one uh, cord for each ball. Yes, basically. Okay. Now is the cord on the other side any different? Oh, jeez, this is the mess down. It just feels like a, it just feels like a change purse filled with hair and yeah. nickels. So it, it, Drew, you're a doctor. Why don't you just check? I told him. That's why we started this whole conversation. No, that's go uh, ahead. No, that's no, wrong. He, no, you wouldn't wrong. let me do it. Yeah, I did. okay, so what am I feeling for now? Is if the cord is thicker on that right side than on the left? No. Same. Yeah. yeah. And in that testy, that the smooth part that's supposedly a lot bigger, can you feel any irregularities in there? You, you kind of no. squeeze around. No, no. Yeah, it may just be some infection there. No, you don't feel any kind of... And if you, now, if you uh. reach up reach up in towards the groin area, you don't feel uh. anything coming down at you. No, what do you mean? Like if you like took... My dick? There's a... <laughs> Won't be coming down at me. Look, there's a, there's a, if you take your test here, there's, there's a, you put your finger up towards the yeah. neck of here. Yeah. Wow. Is there anything? I've never there? really sorted out my nuts like this before. Yeah, no. They've always just been sort of in the way. Yeah. Like if you, uh, yeah. if you were going up in here, here's the cord, right? See this thing? I'm Can't standing up, I have my hand down my pants right now, by the way, good, if anyone's just times. tuned into this show. Yeah, good time. No, yeah. but I'll tell you, that right nut is, it's, 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 it seems a little bigger, yeah. 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 That is that normal? Is is there uh mm, there is can be a one symmetry, little yeah. asymmetry yeah, there? Yeah, but not. Let's yeah, see. <sighs> do a little work here. Oh jeez, my hand stinks. Oh, that's good. I got a handful of ball stink. <laughs> <laughs> you know that certain smell? Whew. Dude, I got to oh. touch that mic stand every yeah, day. Oh, don't worry. He just yeah. ran his hands through his hair. I don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't touch his hair though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you know what? I shower though. It's not bad. It's usually Look at worse the talc than in this. your fingernails. That's gross. Dumped a little talc down there. All right. All right, so you need this checked out. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, Christ. Probably not. A probably infection. <sighs> well, I'll give it a week, see what happens, huh? Yeah. I'm going to let you have a look at it later, maybe. You know, play your cards right. <laughs> Get me drunk. I should bring a six pack in here, loosen me up. Give me some, like, wine coolers. Mike? Yes. You're 27? Yes. Uh, I had a question about a uh, hair removal. Um,. I'm really hairy, and like in the summer months when I sweat, my hair gets mad. It really stinks. I get complaints from my coworkers all the time. Wow. And um, the other night, How like does I was that go Howard, down? Yeah. The other night I was watching Howard Stern, and there was a girl no, on there. No, no, no. Wait a second. A, wait a second. Wait a second. Yeah. What hair stinks when you sweat? I have it like a, well, like the sweat gets in the in the hair, and it gets all matted, and it it just smells. And no matter how much I shower, like in the summer, I just can't help it. I sweat a lot. It's probably not the hair, though, that has anything to do with this. Well, the sweat does. Yeah, well, the sweat's coming anyway, whether you're hairy or not. Yeah, I mean, I'm a hairy guy. Nobody sweats more than me. You but don't I, sweat. I don't, sm I, don't, I don't smell. You sweat. Your face sweats. You don't sweat anywhere else. Yeah, but, but no, I will. I will. It's the like, like it's it's hair on my back. It's yeah, the hair well, on but my listen, chest. Mike, you're going to sweat whether you have hair or not. Who tells you you smell? My coworkers. What do they say? I say, you smell, go home, take a shower. And then I, I do, and I all right. shampoo well, you on just, my chest and you're, everything. You're, and it, it, all right, you're obsessed with the hair, but you really just got a funk going. Well, how do I get rid of the funk? Well, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I mean well, part of it is, uh, I don't well, know. The if hair bothers me, too, because it's hard when I'm with a woman, you know. It's like I'm hairy like a damn dog. And I seen a thing the other night where this lady had hair removal, like laser surgery, done in her crotch area. And I was wondering what would be the cost and how could I get that done. You had to have, have laser on your faggoty self. True, yeah, please. You, you please. had laser done on your neck. Let me tell, uh, let me say a few things about the laser. Mm. <clears throat> This laser is one of these things where it's uh, some sort of, you know, magic cure-all to everything. There's something very romantic about the laser. What's well, the high tech? It's Ooh, we'll, yeah. we'll laser that hair off. Yeah. Let, let me tell you something. I've had my neck lasered two times, maybe three times. I think two times. It uh, it was painful. I did it on my neck. Not uh, not down around, not down low around the collarbone. I did it up because I got. I used to get ingrown hairs on my neck and I would just said, well, I'll just laser the hair off and then I won't have to shave it and then I won't get my ingrown hairs. I was sort of low beard under my jaw and uh, the hair all grows back well, immediately. It can work. I mean, it can work. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, listen, is I, I have any less hair on my neck than I did before I had the laser? Mm. No. No. It, it's expensive. 
It uh, it smells bad because it smells like burning hair. It hurts. Because, uh, especially, you have no idea what the, the under, this, uh, Adam's apple area feels like. Sensitive, yeah. Real sensitive. And, uh, it, it all grows back. And then it grows back ingrown because the hair tries to grow back and it's so, it has fallen out now. So now you're gonna get ingrown hairs. So, here's the, uh, here's what, uh, who is this guy? Brett? Mike. Oh, Mike, yeah. What Mike's, uh, gotta do is, uh, just stay as clean as he can. There's nothing. I mean, he can he can trim himself like a goat every he, once he in a while. He can trim. He can use deodorant soaps. He can use the the uh, antiperspirants. He can wear lighter clothing. You know, you know, there's a lot of other stuff he needs to work on. Smelly people tend to smell. That's just their lot in life. Yeah. You, you know what it is? I, I I don't know why I'm on this kick. I I really don't. In general, but it does yeah. drive me bizarre because I was over at my mom's house tonight and I was looking at her and I was watching the sweat pour down her forehead. Yeah. And I thought, well, my mom's forehead sweated a lot, and now I got a sweaty forehead. But everyone's got to uh, attribute it. You know, oh, yeah. he's nervous. Right, oh, right. he's done drugs. Right. Oh, you stayed up too late. Right. It's not healthy. Or you're eating too much of this. Right. No, my mom was sweaty. Now I'm sweaty. That's Your it. dad was hairy. Now you're hairy. Your grandpa smelled. Now you smell. That's it. And we got to do a whole bunch of stuff. I don't know why we have to get in everyone's lifestyle. Look at him. He's, he's a pig. He smell, you know, it's always something, and I know this is human nature, but why? Everyone's just the way you are. If you're good looking, you got to write a book about how to be good looking, and if uh, you're fat, you're tortured. Any fat person, oh, he is a slob. Look at him. He just eats and eats and eats. I, I don't know what that is. Everyone just got a hand dealt to them, and that was it. Bald guys got the bald hand dealt to them. People with blue eyes got the blue eyed hand dealt to them, and that's it. Why we have to make it their fault all the time, I don't know. Yeah, it's a certain few things you can do. You can floss a little more, yep. take a couple more showers. But, man, smelly guys smell. Hmm. You notice? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. You ever get someone else's smell on you? Uh-uh. I played basketball all day today. It was 100 degrees in the valley. Yeah. Guy I was guarding was wearing no shirt. Oh. Sitting down after the game, got a little of that, what's that B.O.? <laughs> you know, that's, that's not my B.O., how about getting some B.O.? They sniff my forearm, getting some serious B.O. from like the top of my forearm and thinking, you know why? Because I tried to steal the ball. I stuck my hand through his goddamn armpit. Now I got a big forearm full of B.O. Anderson, you'd hate sports. Guys sweat and they sweat right on other guys. It's horrible. Yeah. I played sports, Jackass. Oh, sorry, buddy. Sorry. Oh, you're in uh, ice. Sorry. No, yeah, I, played, I played sports all through high school. Okay. What would you play? Dare you? Football, baseball, right. basketball. Wow. Right. Right. Football, baseball, basketball in high school? Quarterback. Quarterback? Really? Freshman year. Okay. Then I got injured. Uh, Let's take a little... Uh, basketball? Power forward. Really? Forward? What What high school did you go to? Was it a private I'm not school? proud of that school. I don't like to say. Was it was a real high school? Yeah, it was a real high school. CIF. Wow. We're going to talk, talk more, more to Anderson about his uh, yeah, athletic prowess. About his life and who he is, pitcher. Adam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I still don't know if Anderson's his first name or his last name. Third base and pitcher. <laughs> Holy Christ. First or last? You don't know that? You're no. such a dick. <laughs> All right, listen. I try not to get too too close to people I work with because sometimes you got to cut them loose, and then it gets you know it gets dicey. And we'll take a little break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. More sweat talk. True and I just had a huge conversation about the perspiration. Oh, well, we're going to keep it going here on the air. <sighs> we'll call oh, here on line three about my smells. My head never stops sweating. All right. Tom, how are you guys? How are you doing? Good. You're 24. What's up? I am. I uh, I have two pills I want to talk to you about, Adam. Mm-hmm. First one, this I take this pill called the Body Vent. Body Vent? Mint. Like a mint you put mint. in your mouth, but you put it like body on your mint. body. What a weird concept. You're a... Uh, Oh, really? Yeah. Body mint. Mm. Yeah. And, and I, I read it on the LA Times. So what's I know that? it's not junk. What's what it, it do? Oh, what's well, it? everything in the LA Times has got to be factual. Sure. Yes. <laughs> and what, what is it? What's in it? it well, I'm reading, uh, I'm reading the package. It says 100% full body natural deodorant. Yeah, what it's is made it? made out of 100 milligrams of chlorophyll. Oh, yeah, yes. Yes. I've heard of this helping. So, oh, yeah, yeah. You, and you, so I'm a smelly guy. You know? Yeah, does it help? Well, yes. Here's the deal, though. I'm smelly and I'm lazy. <laughs> so, 
So I uh, proving the point that anybody who smells well, doesn't, doesn't take care of themselves. It compounds yeah. the problem because they don't like to shower that much. No, no, I shower a lot, but I think when I get in the shower, I'm kind of lazy even when I get in there. Mm-hmm. I'm in there forever. But the point is, it cuts down the stink. All right. The chlorophyll I, does. Yeah, yeah. Chlorophyll does. does. I've heard of that working. Okay. Well, you know, it's, I wake up in the morning and I don't have morning breath. Interesting. I if I, you're supposed to take two a day, and I think if I took three a day, mm-hmm. it would be. I think that I'd be like golden. And I've got some cornhole smell, and it kind of helps with the cornhole smell. I haven't. The jury's still oh, out. It helps jury. with the armpit smell, and it definitely helps with the uh, the mouth smell. Oh, uh, hold on. It's here. A tough gig, the uh, cornhole jury. What is? I guess he's got some ass smell too. Let me tell you what I'll do to cut down on smell. I'll uh, before I leave the house. Cornhole or body? Uh both. Okay. I'll eat uh, three or four charcoal briquettes. Uh. That cram it up your ass or anything? No, I I, I eat them. Oh, I well, I'll eat three and then I'll keister one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, chlorophyll also comes. You can just buy it in a liquid form. I think. Can you? You can buy. There's like a there's a health food store. There's a health food thing. store. I'll yeah. have chlorophyll. Yeah. Chlorophyll is just the stuff that makes green plants green, pretty much. That's it. So. Uh, can't hurt you. It's probably good for you. It's in everything. I mean, chlorophyll's in spinach, right? Yeah. So, I don't quite know how it does the de smelling. No, but when he talking. when he was telling you about that sort of uh, body mint, yes, y- you raised an eyebrow, and when he said chlorophyll, you went, eh, yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. all right, all right. So uh, look into that. Uh, all you smelly guys, look into the uh, chlorophyll. Jared, yeah, you're 14. Yeah, what's up? I just wanted to know why you get boners in the morning. Bowen is in the Moen in? That's right. Yeah. that a new country song? You know how it is. You're sleeping all night, dreaming about your sister. And... No, not really. No. Okay. Uh, you get erections in the morning because uh, you're 14. Yeah. Let's you know you're alive. And uh, you probably at 14, you're dreaming about stuff that's bizarre. What? Well, Actually, what it is a is pressure. Yeah, your bladder fills up. The stretch in the bladder actually triggers a spinal reflex that does it. The congestion down there helps it along, and then there's a normal part of sleep cycling late in the morning that uh, can induce this. And part of that is dreaming. And uh, your hormonal system is turning on at 14, and that's when that starts to happen. And it's uh, normal physiology. In fact, one of the ways we try to decide whether a guy is having erectile problems that is in fact biological versus psychological is whether or not they're having the nighttime wood. Or morning wood. Yeah, you know, I I had a dream last night that I was at that uh, crappy uh, North Hollywood house uh, that my dad bought for seventeen thousand five hundred dollars in nineteen seventy five. White rocks on the roof. No. Oh no. 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 Drew, close your eyes and picture what you could buy for seventeen thousand five hundred dollars. What kind of home right. you could purchase in nineteen seventy five? Yeah. Not nineteen forty one. Right. Nineteen seventy five. Okay. And not on some hillside by Spawn Ranch in uh, Chatsworth where uh, Charles Manson uh, had his meetings, but in the middle of North Hollywood. Got it. Freeways running everywhere. Oh, yeah. A May company down the street. I mean, bustling metropolis. Mm -hmm. You picture in that house? Got it. Okay. I had a dream I was in that house last night, and I was was thinking, I got to take a picture of this because I got to show Drew. (laughs) He's, wait till he sees these stairs. Is this the house you lived in the garage of? No, I no. lived in the, uh, I lived in the loft. Mm-hmm. And there was a, it was like an A-frame house and I lived in the ceiling. Basically, and there was this uh, staircase that was like a four inches wide and, you know, went straight up that went up there. Like, it was like a studio house. Yeah. Oh, and I kept thinking, I just want to know, I'm thinking of you, buddy. I kept thinking, yeah, I, I thinking gotta take I'm a flattered. picture, I gotta take a picture of this to show Drew. Never believe me otherwise. <laughs> Brett? You're uh, 16? Yeah. What's up? Uh, first of all, I want to say your man show is like the best show on TV right now. Great. Thank you. My question is, I was uh, at the mall with this really hot chick that I like. I was going to ask her out and stuff, but um, I was finishing up eating. And like this one guy I've hated since I was my freshman year of high school starts rolling up and starts macking on her and stuff. Yeah. And I roll up and I start talking to her. And I start talking to him. I'm saying, what's up? Back off my girl and all that stuff. Right. And then she, he's all, what, is it your girlfriend? I say, no. Nah. And she just gives me, like, this weird-ass look. Yes. She does. And, and by the way, can you roll up on foot? Yeah. I you can do that. Okay. It's basically just walking up on her. Wait, it, it, she is your girlfriend? No, she's not my girlfriend. Was, 
I'm going to ask her out. And she, like, she, she wants to be my girlfriend, but she doesn't want me to ask her out yet. At some and, whoa, thing. hold on a second here. Let's read. Let's <laughs> examine that <laughs> statement. All right. Let's do a little offline recreation. So, she's your girlfriend? Well, no, but I'm fixing to ask her out. Now, uh, I haven't asked... Uh, uh, she, I haven't asked her out yet. Now she wants to be my girlfriend, but she asked me not. She to just ask. doesn't want me to ask her out. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Maybe she wants to skip that whole messy courtship part of the relationship and get right to the sex. Maybe that's what he's saying. <sighs> Brett, yeah, is she uh, currently in another relationship? No. Why wouldn't she want you to ask her out then? She she was telling me like that she doesn't know me that well. Like I just met her like two weeks ago. Yeah, well, why would she, she wants to be your girlfriend though? Yeah. Uh huh. It's just some weird thing. I see. I see. I, 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 how do you know she wants to be your girlfriend? This is just one of those weird math problems that you run into where she's really, you know, super attracted to him and really eager to go out with him and be his girlfriend, but they don't know each other that well. You know how uncomfortable the first date can be. Yeah. Okay, Brett. So. And and then she, like, walks off really fast, and I try to catch up to her and, like, talk to her and stuff, but she just keeps on walking and doesn't say a thing. Yeah. yeah. More love. More love. That's yeah. what women do when they're in love. They try to get away from you when, well, when they're in a food he, court. The, the love thing he might not understand. It, it, he, she wants to be your girlfriend when she walks away and ignores you. Yeah. Would you say that? Yeah. Oh, listen, that's how I know a chick's got it bad for me. That she walks away pissed. Well, when they run, that means, oh, yeah. <laughs> that means they really got it bad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I had that happen in high school. Don't they roll away? Yeah, yeah. Roll off. yeah, she didn't walk off. She rolled off, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Gosh. So, uh, now what? So, she's in love with you, but yeah. she won't talk to you. Well, she backed off the relationship part. Now she's gone into the I don't want to speak part. Yeah. Yeah, I want to be the girlfriend, but I don't want to talk to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Man. Because, like, I called her later tonight trying to figure out what was up, and mm -hmm. she answered the phone. She then she's like, oh, I can't talk right now. Bye. Let me tell you something, Brett. <laughs> I tell you, this is a problem because uh, I've seen chicks like this get pretty possessive. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. All of a sudden, they don't want you hanging out with your friends. They try to take over your life. They they're walking. They got their hands stuffed in your back pocket when you're walking in school. Won't we'll speak to you though. And I'm, then, I'm and just saying. If you look. I'm just saying, Brett, you got a potential problem here because this chick's got it bad for you, yeah. real real bad for you. And before you know it, man, it's like. She wants to spend so much time with you that she's smothering you. You can't do anything alone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, man. That's rough. I mean, this is serious predicament, so, bro. I mean, he got he got to really take matters into his own hands and just yeah. Like, I, you know stop, what? You, stop you, communicating. Yeah, with that's you. what you got to do, yeah. Brett. Yeah. You got to step back and tell her she's got to chill out a little bit. All right. All right. All right. I got yeah. one more question. Well, hold on, buddy. Now, now, wait a minute. This is serious. You got to tell her. You got to call her up and tell her. You guys got to slow it down a little, that this is moving a little bit too fast. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. And uh, I know she's in love, but uh, she's got to reel it in just a little bit because she's making an ass of herself, quite frankly. All right. All right should, should we call her? Uh, no, she's asleep. She's Dead asleep. 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 Okay. Well, tomorrow, I think you call her. And, uh, you know, make sure she's sitting down and uh, not holding any sharp objects or anything. I don't want her doing anything stupid when she hears the news. That you're breaking all, breaking things off a little bit, all right? All right. All right, buddy. It's tough, I know. I was there myself in high school. Lots of chicks running away, not talking on the phone. I mean, I know when a chick's into me. Oh, man. Yeah. How, how is Brett going to get through life? I don't know. You know, I... I uh, I picture Brett like having long conversations uh, with uh, like a, his hamster, his kid brother's hamster and stuff mm. like that. Yeah. Did Brett? Did Brett have any idea what was going on or? No. I mean, completely detached. Not no, psychotic. No. He just was just not not able to sort of accept reality. Now you see, I uh, I label that as stupidity. Maybe. Okay. Oh, Drew, Drew goes maybe. That's a definite yes in the stupidity department. <laughs> she wanted to be my girlfriend. He called her up and she said, uh, I can't talk and hung up. Good sign. She ran away in the food court. All right. He's going to break that girl's heart. Lisa? Lisa, 29. All right. 
I'm going to put Lisa on hold and uh, speak to... Hello? Leslie. Yes. 23, what's up? What's up? You sound hot, baby. <laughs> no. No? Yeah, maybe. What's up? Well, you know, listening to y'all, you guys are funny. Great. Man, calling from Van Nuys, huh? Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, you got to get out of that pit. Yeah, I just moved here, actually. Oh, <laughs> oh. that's stupid. It's horrendous. I know. Nothing worse. No, no worse place to spend a summer, by the way, than Van Nuys. <laughs> well, it's gonna be. It'll be nice. Hundred five all week this week. Yeah. Yeah, nice soupy, thick air, and you get to see a lot of crazy people just walking around in the sun, waiting to die. <laughs> it's wonderful. Exactly. A, lot, a lot of green. You feel my pain. Yeah. All right. So what's up? Well, basically, I've been seeing my boyfriend. We were engaged, actually, but I broke it off for a year and a half. Why? And, Why'd you break it off? Um, oh, oh God. It's, I mean, you know, you guys will be here all night, but to make a long story short, um, my family didn't like his background. Which he was what? Like, he is um, an ex-drug user, abuser. And he got out of all that, and I, you know, gave him the benefit of the doubt, and they, you know, made me break it off with him at, at a point where it wasn't really necessary. They made you break it off with him? I've been controlled by my family for at, 23 at years. Po- at the point, what wasn't really necessary? Um, just for me to break it off with him. What, why did, did you, they suggest you do that? Because they they felt in their hearts that I was unhappy. Were you? Yes and no. They felt in their hearts that you were I mean, unhappy. No, honestly, that's exactly how I feel. Like it's like it's kind of torn because you know when it, when your family comes into play, you want to give them. You know, it's your family, so no one else would come before your family. No, really, not me. <laughs> I got a long well, list of people now. that come before this. But but, but wait a minute. What do you? Where did you grow up? I grew up in in California. Where? Um, Culver City in West Hollywood. Okay. And so your family still resides there? They're from London. I uh-huh. see. <laughs> That's where that weird, uh, yeah, whatever yeah, accent you probably, have. I don't, I don't have a weird accent. There's yeah, something, something uh, something's yeah. going on, but I wouldn't have guessed London. That's for sure. <laughs> okay. So you broke it off with this guy. Then you got back together with him. And but, now, yeah. and, and now we're kind of back together. And for the first time that I've known him, he hit me. Mm. He hit you. Yeah. Is he doing drugs now? No. He w- he was sober when he hit you. Yeah. He doesn't drink. He, well, he drinks, but he wasn't drinking the night that he was with me. And he doesn't smoke pot. Um, occasionally. Okay. His he is his addiction is active. So I don't know how you can even talk about him as being through with drugs because yeah, that I mean, that is active I mean, right I now. I guess when I can say look, to you, let's say look, he's using drugs. Yeah. He's an addict going again with drugs, and his behavior uh, sort of all bets are off. When his, his disease is active, he's going to do all kinds of things. Violence is one of the things that addicts manifest very commonly. Yeah. Sounds like your parents were right. His, his, he's never had any sobriety. His program is weak, and he's getting back into his drugs. If he, if he wants to stay with you, you need to go to Al-Anon. He needs to have an active relationship with a sponsor and be working the steps, and that's well, it. Hold on. Maybe she had it coming. <laughs> Leslie? Yes? Um, what would you do? Did he hit you in the face? He hit me in the head. Like, uh, like in behind the head. He didn't hit me to where it was like something that could be shown. With a closed uh, hand or open hand? Open. Is your dad an alcoholic? No. Mom? No. Hmm. Well, why? Why do you? Why are you so defensive? And why, why are you such denial about his guy? This guy's drug I use. I don't know. I think that I kind of given him the benefit of the doubt because I know the person he can be. All right. Why are you in such massive denial about who he actually is? I don't know. All right. Well, that's it. He's got to get sober. And uh, there's no excuse for hitting a woman, although, eh, you know, with an open hand on the back of the head. I mean, you know, if you got to do it. If you want to help him, if you want, if you want to help him, you start going to but, Al-Anon. But the open hand on the back of the head seems like a, it's like a Three Stooges move, you know. I mean, I go to counseling right now, but I, I feel that I'm not very honest with her. I will be honest. All right, Drew's mic shut off. There it is. Uh, you got to be honest. You got to start going to Al-Anon. You got to get a sponsor. Okay. That's it. Let's uh, take ourselves uh, a little break. Uh, when we come back, uh, we'll speak to Katie. Katie has uh, weird anus problems, or so it says. <laughs> oh, good talk. Doc can't explain it. Let's know if there's any uh, input from uh, Doc Drew. We'll talk to her after this. Hey, everybody. 
everybody. It's the Love Line. I'm Adam. That's true. Mighty Mighty Boston's in here tomorrow night. Not a minute too soon. <laughs> I uh, love those guys. Great band, great guys. So uh, we'll talk to them tomorrow night. Yeah! <laughs> Katie? Yes. You're uh, 21. You having some anus problems on us? I get, yeah, I guess you could call it that. <laughs> um, about two months ago, my boyfriend cheated on me and we broke up. And about a month ago, I noticed like little irritations. And I thought, me being like the pessimist I am, I'm like, oh my God, he gave me warts or something. And so I went to my gynecologist and my primary care physician. And they did a whole bunch of tests and said that there were nothing. And they said that there was nothing there. And I was like, no, they're there. I can feel they hurt. And this is in the rectal area or in the vaginal, vaginal area? The rectal area. You went to two doctors, huh? Right. And they did pap smears and everything. And they examined that area and couldn't see anything. Right. Did they check for herpes? Um, I, you know, I don't know. Were you having anal sex with this guy? No. Well, how would you get a problem back there? Yeah. I, 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 that's what I thought maybe you could help me with. I have no idea. And did they give you any treatment? No. Hmm. Did, uh, you, how'd you find out your boyfriend cheated? <laughs> I kind of walked in on them. You really walked in while they were having sex? Well, I think they had fallen asleep, and I walked in in the morning. Oof. How did that work? Uh, where were they? In my bed. Oh, what? Did he think <laughs> you were out of town or something? Oh, I lived with my boyfriend. This, and, this uh, is the point. I, what would made him... <laughs> hey, hey, a yes. uh, dip ass? <laughs> they, yeah, they you, have... you don't think it's strange? It is. That he'd, he'd leave the evidence there and, and we don't he'd have, have try to clear it your out. bed while he's living with you, having sex with somebody. Well, you know, I had told him I was moving back home and uh, I had taken some of my things and I went back to get some other stuff that I needed and found. All right, so he thought you are moved out. You are breaking up already. Right, right, I guess. I, things were still going pretty good at that time. But Why would you move out then? Because I just didn't, like... The situation. Well, how, a, how good I'm were things? Big, excuse me. How good were things going? If you didn't like the situation, you know what they were going okay. I'm just not a roommate sort of person. <laughs> what was the problem that caused you to move out? Um, just stupid stuff. I like what? I didn't like being home alone, and we lived in a really bad area of town. All right, so all right. All I didn't like it? being home alone late at night, and all right. I don't know where he was. Get some man you talk for him. Where was he, Katie? He worked nights? Excuse me? Did he work nights? I did. I still do. So why were you home alone at night? Um, because he would go out. And no, no, he would never answer. All right. No, you know, it's not going to answer our questions. Listen, this is borderline. Uh, Katie's got to be somewhat, would you say mildly retarded? <laughs> Here's the part that never gets old to me about this show, is, the, is what people say and how they have no idea what the logical questions would be. I know. I don't like being home alone in this terrible neighborhood. Where was he? I don't know where he was. I was at work at night. Yeah. I mean, it's they're Really, it's like they're, they're incredibly stupid or they're incredibly high. Yeah. It, it's as if, it's like if I said, yeah, I burnt my feet really badly and you went... Were you, uh, what you do, go out barefoot or something? And I went, huh? I don't no. Know. No, I was wearing shoes. What are you talking about? I said, listen, you made a statement. You walked in on your boyfriend having sex in your bed and you live together. Don't you expect someone to say, geez, what do you think? You're out of town or staying, staying somewhere overnight? Well, and then she goes into, all right, this is situation, didn't like situation, I had to move out. Why? Oh, well, that's just like the situation. Uh, so we have the world's worst callers. So Sean Fortune. Sean? 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 Yeah. What's up? All right, uh, I was going down on my girlfriend's movie theater, you know? What, what was the last three words? I was going down on my girlfriend in the movie theater. In the movie theater? That's right. Uh huh. What were you guys watching that? The Lilo and Stitch? <laughs> no. Lord of the Rings. Like Mike? Lord of the Rings. Okay. Yeah. Alright. And, uh, when she released, she sprayed. When Is she released? Normal? Perfectly normal. Did any of that get in your popcorn? Uh, uh, no, I didn't have any popcorn. Okay. And, uh, really, in a movie theater, you're. 
Is that, that seems like it takes a little effort. Plus, you got to get down there on your knees with the uh, milk duds and the Abba Zabba residue. Yeah, yeah. That's a disaster. When did this happen? How long ago did this happen? Uh, about a week ago. Lord of the Rings is not even in the theater anymore. Yeah. It's in the dollar, dollar theater. It's in the dollar theater? Yeah. All right. All right. It all Was there no one out. else in the room there? No, who cares? Wow. Fourteen. It's going down on her, you know. Oh, my God. Who says chivalry's dead? Listen, get, getting down, you ever do that? You ever drop your keys? Or when you're younger, you drop some change or your wallet or something on that theater floor? Ugh. And you start feel, you have to feel around Oof. for it, and it's sticky, yeah. and it's crusty, and it's goopy. Yeah. And one day I'm going to tell you the story about the time I actually went into a theater that they were gutting and gut it and pulled out all of the seats and unbolted oh. every seat. Uh -huh. And the bolts are inside and all the stuff, like if you spill a big tub of Coke at the top, it just all runs down that uh, slab mm -hmm. floor at an angle. And it just, everything's corroded and sticky and disgusting. And I was down there on my knees removing 50, no, 99 seats. No, more. About 110 seats just down there with a little ratchet. And you couldn't even get to the bolts and they were... Oh. Okay. Mm. Oh, let me, let me no. say something real fast. No. Real fast. No. Like Mike. No. Somebody brought that up. I brought it up. You brought it up. Why is it when they have a kid dunk, they got to make it look so fake, where he jumps up over the rim and then drops the ball down in the hoop? It's like Flubber from 1963. Yeah, can't yeah. you make him stretch out? Anderson, you're a film student. Spud Webb was 5'4", and he used to dunk. And he won the dunk contest. And this little brother was 5'4", and, man, he would be stretched out completely over his head and dunk it. And here's what I'm saying. When you have little Bow Wow dunk the ball, instead of making the thing he jumps off of right next to the hoop, put it down a little bit and have him stretch. Don't have that part where his chin goes over the rim. Oh. And then he throws it down. It always looks like hell. When I saw the trailer coming on, I'm like, please don't do it. Don't do it. And there it was. And it's because it's, it's CGI. It's not even real. It's computer generated. But stretch him out. Oh, man. Spud. Okay, we'll take a break. We'll be back. All right, that's the show, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Mighty Mighty Boss Tones tomorrow night. Drew, I'll talk to you on the cell phone. Yeah, I can't bit. wait. So, until next we time. We haven't talked enough yet tonight. <laughs> <laughs> until next time, this is Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Not not because she doesn't want to out this guy, but because you've never heard of her. Right. <laughs> this has been Love Line. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Love Line is Ann Wilkins Engel. Love Line is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.